Our next guest is coming into our studio from a port in Perth, Australia. That's right, Rear Admiral Christopher Grady, Notre Dame alum, is coming to us live from the deck of the USS Carl Vinson aircraft carrier. Welcome to the show, Rear Admiral. It's an honor to have you with us tonight. Thanks, Jack, and uh, we're talking to you from the war room of the Carl Vinson. Uh, we just dropped the hook here in Perth after six months of uh, delivering nearly 600,000 pounds of justice on the head of the evil that is ISIS. So we're really glad to be here with you after having uh, served the nation uh, admirably. Uh, still got some work to do, but we're glad to be with you today. Well, and we are all thankful that you and your crew are out there defending American interests and uh, fighting evil all around the world. Now, I know you are not the only domer on that huge aircraft carrier. You have some fellow domers with you, I understand? I do. I'm joined today by Lieutenant Kristen Ayala, and you can see it here. Uh, she is a Navy industrial hygienist here, serving the 5,300 sailors that are on board uh, Carl Benson. And I'm also here with Lieutenant Tom Fagan. Tom is a Naval flight officer who, uh, who flies the E-2C Hawkeye, uh, and uh, did great work uh, in that fight against ISIS that I just described. Now, Admiral, how did you end up at Notre Dame? Well, uh, going into the Navy was uh, was probably not an option for me. It was uh, in the family business for a long time. In fact, one of Tom's classmates is my son, Nick, who is also a class of 12 uh, and graduated from NROTC with him. Nick's fifth generation, and I'm four. Uh, so I had my Naval Academy appointment. I had my NROTC scholarship to Notre Dame. And when it came down to it, what I wanted was a little bit of the Notre Dame exceptionalism uh, that comes from an academic program uh, as great as you can get at, uh, at ND. I was also a varsity center and uh, the opportunity to spend with the legendary uh, coach Mike Tachico uh, was something that weighed very heavily in my mind in making that ultimate decision. Mike Tachico, certainly a Notre Dame legend. You, of course, graduated from Notre Dame, and I looked at your resume. We don't have time to talk about all the tremendous responsibility and positions you've held in the Navy, and you are now in command of Carrier Strike Group 1. How many personnel, how many ships are under your command right now? Your Carrier Strike Group 1 is about 10,000 people. It includes uh, Carrier Air Wing 17, which is nine squadrons of airplanes. It includes, it includes the the flagship Carl Benson, from which we are broadcasting today, it includes two air defense cruisers and eight destroyers. Uh, we deployed with a subset of those, or there's about 6,000 of those folks here with us. The rest are back in San Diego preparing for their own deployment. Can you give us a little bit of a, a look, a window, into what it's like to have the kind of responsibility that you have? Well, um, it's, a, it's a daunting uh, challenge, but one that, uh, that, I, that I relish because I've been very, very well trained. Uh, that started with my time as an NROTC midshipman uh, uh, at Notre Dame, and it also that, that training began with all the, the larger thinking that I did at ND, both, uh, both uh, as a history major, but just ethically in terms of learning how to do the right thing. I've been doing this job for 32 years. It's the most rewarding thing that I have ever done. Um, and to say that uh, we've been able to deliver uh, uh, over half a million pounds of ordinance uh, and justice uh, in our last campaign um, has meant the world to me. Um, just as importantly, however, though, is bringing everybody home safely. And uh, now that we've exited the theater, I know we still have about a month and a half's worth of work to do as we work through a Western Pacific, but I'm delighted to say that uh, that pressure of bringing everybody home safely uh, out of harm's way is, uh, is one that I don't have to deal with anymore. Flying yep. is a dangerous business. We've got a lot of flying left to do, but uh, uh, so there it is. Where is the home port for the Vincent? San Diego. So when will you be there? About six weeks, I think. You said you have about a month of work left to do? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we deployed the 22nd of August, and we get back the 4th of June. So it's nearly 10 months deployment. Can you tell me a little bit what it's like uh, to command the, the fine men and women that you do? I know one of the great pleasures of my job, because of the terrific ROTC program that Notre Dame does have that you've already touched on, is I get to meet not only some of your fellow graduates, but uh, many of the young men and women who are in your command. We had Navy SEALs on campus last fall, and I just admire them so much. They really are the best and brightest of our country. Uh, yes, sir. That's, that's very, very true. 
Um, and uh, I would tell you, again, over 32 years, this is the finest cadre of young men and women, the products of our high schools, uh, of our community colleges, and our great universities like Notre Dame that I have ever seen. They keep you on your toes. Uh, they ask all the right questions. They are fully and totally committed. As you know, this is an all-volunteer force, and so they're all here inspired by the mission. Um, if I could, I would tell you that if you look at 100 graduating high school seniors uh, in college and you take away those that have various issues, we're down to about 25% of those that we can recruit into the Navy, and those are the same folks that industry and college go after. So, again, it is the most highly trained, motivated, and dedicated group of individuals that I've worked with in my 32-year career. Admiral, as we wrap this up, I have to ask you, what is the week of the Notre Dame Navy football game like for you and your fellow domers when you're serving on an aircraft carrier? Well, uh, I would tell you that uh, anybody who's worked for me or with me knows that uh, Navy, uh, that the Notre Dame football is an is a, is a, is a interesting time for my staff. I start worrying on Wednesday, and if we lose, I'm just consulate till Tuesday. Um, so they pray for the season to be over. Now, Navy is a special week. It's not as important to those of us here as Michigan was, but Navy is a special week because they're still uh, cling to the reality that uh, perhaps they can compete with us on the field. Uh, and so we hear about it quite regularly, day in and day out, as we lead up to, uh, lead up to the game. It's an honor to play Navy, no doubt about it, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad that we continue to do that, uh, but there is a lot of good-natured rivalry that goes on. My goal was to go my entire career without losing the Navy. Of course, that ended after some 24 years in 2007, uh, but we started another streak, and I know that uh, uh, nine times out of ten, uh, we're going to beat Navy uh, as long as there's no things like chop blocks and cut blocks and things like that, which we all complain about. I'm sure Coach Van gorder has got all this figured out, though. <laughs> I think he does. Admiral, thank you so much for the time. Thank you for what you do. And please let every member of your crew, Notre Dame grad or not, know how much everybody at Notre Dame appreciates what they do to protect America all around the world. We'll do that and go Irish. Thank you, Admiral.